Hi, everyone. My name is Marco Vallicenti. I am the Director General of the Innovations Programs Directorate at Agriculture Canada. I'm really, really happy to be here, and I want to thank the organizers of Canola Week for inviting me to provide a bit of a presentation on um, key areas that we are looking at and working on in agriculture and agri-food Canada. Um, I am responsible for programming in areas such as environmental sustainability, in areas such as science and innovation, and food security. So those would be my key three areas of, of focus. And uh, so, yeah, thanks again for inviting me. I thought I'd take just a few minutes to share my screen and provide a bit of an overview via a presentation. So I'll do that right now. And I will, uh, as I said, take a few minutes, go through a couple of the slides and then talk a little bit about uh, uh, some key areas that we're, we're heavily involved in over the, next, uh, over the next couple of years. So I wanted to maybe provide a bit of a, an overview of what we're seeing in the, in the ag sector, uh, take some time and talk about the next policy framework and, and touch upon some programs that we are managing that I'm sure you would be interested that maybe fits it with uh, outside the next policy framework. So federal only programming. So what are we seeing in the sector? I think generally uh, we're seeing some positive outlook over the last number of years. I think that the slide prepare, provides a bit of an, uh, an overview, uh, talking a little bit about uh, where we are from a net cash uh, flow uh, and income perspective hit record in 2020, uh, almost 23% uh, uh, above the previous five-year average in 2019. So again, positive trends. Now we know that there is variability and diversity in the sector and we can appreciate it. And maybe on the next slide, just uh, uh, an, another key element that we're, we're very, very aware of and have been active with uh, colleagues in the sector, taking a sense of uh, where the drought has impacted uh, uh, not only uh, the, 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 the West, uh, but certainly more specific in the context of uh, some, of the, some of the grains and of course, canola also being uh, quite impacted. StatsCan uh, highlighted some of the projections, uh, significant decreases in, in grain and oilseed crops over the last, uh, over the last summer, uh, which I know is also uh, you know, being hit hard at, at the farm level. So again, uh, while we have been seeing some positive trends in the sector, we know instances like drought or what we're seeing currently in BC with flooding does impact the sector. Again, we wanted to just uh, highlight a couple of things, but, but we do see in the sector steady growth uh, from an export perspective, uh, fantastic, fantastic news over the last few years, uh, just in, in uh, the early uh, uh, few months of uh, 2021 significant increase in January to January we saw we saw almost a 17.5 percent increase in comparison to to last year and we do see and we do expect continued growth in the sector um, and you know we we are expecting to reach um, our 80 billion uh, targets by by 2025 as as highlighted by uh, some of the elements on the screen. So good to see that we are uh, continuing to see some steady growth. Um, but we do know that there are challenges, and I highlighted in a couple of slides, uh, previous slides, uh, drought, uh, some of the challenges we're seeing in BC on, on, on flooding. But even in the context of COVID-19, we, we've seen uh, structural challenges, whether uh, we're talking about supply chain, food system issues, uh, we did see some challenges with regards to uh, food security, and we are trying to get better at our data analytics to look at that value chain uh, impact. And so that is something that we're doing. Um, we are seeing additional challenges in the context of global trade, when, whether we're thinking about disputes, uh, access to labor uh, for, uh, for our sector has been uh, problematic, and we are, uh, of course, trying to address those. We're seeing interruptions in transportation, climate change, severe weather events, as I just described. Um, and of course, we're seeing some issues around public trust. And on the, on the animal health side, um, uh, first case of uh, African swine fever in our hemisphere. So, so again, uh, we are uh, pretty active in looking at some of these issues that is, is increasing the volatility in our sector. 
I do want to just mention uh, climate change and environmental sustainability. It'll be a bit of a theme over the next few slides. Uh, we are at a pivotal point in time. Uh, I think it's extremely imperative that we 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 talk about sustainable development and growth, um, ensuring that the sector is contributing to climate change goals and ensuring that we have stewardship of our lands for future generations. Um, we see you know, changes in precipitation, uh, uh, extreme weather uh, can increase soil erosion, heat waves as we saw this summer, uh, pest and disease outbreaks, all uh, extremely uh, relevant and impacting our competitiveness and our productivity here in Canada. Um, the government has laid out an ambitious agenda. I'll talk about a few, some of the programs that were, uh, were recently announced to address uh, and to assist in, in helping through climate change and, uh, and helping reduce greenhouse gas emissions. I think that's quite important. And we are looking at trying to uh, exceed um, the, the new measures to reduce our 2030 emission goals, including getting to net zero by 2050. If I talk about the next policy frame, I, I think it, it's a really important time. Uh, our, our Canadian Agricultural Partnership Program uh, framework ends um, April, uh, March 31st, 2023, and um, uh, the next policy framework kicks in April 1st of that same year. And we, we, need, to, we need to really ensure that the, the FedProv elements capture key commitments that are going to be important to the sector. And just last week, uh, FedProv ministerial, uh, FedProv ministers met in Guelph and laid out a path, a vision to uh, getting uh, the next policy uh, framework up and running on April 1st, 2023. It outlined uh, some key commitments, uh, climate change, environment, and sustainable growth being a key major commitment that we want to uh, continue to grow and ensure that, uh, that we address uh, of course, ensuring that we have a resilient and inclusive economy, uh, especially in the context of uh, defining and supporting economic prosperity. And of course, one of the key elements that we want to bring to the table is the ability to uh, measure results and outcomes. Some of you may have seen this. It was uh, an outcome of the uh, the Guelph statement. It, it, it In one slide, I guess, is really the key element to the, to the vision and the objectives of the next policy framework. You'll see on the outer ring, uh, the three pillars that we think will be a key focus, environment, economic, and a social dimension. And within, within that ring, we can really identify the areas of focus, whether we're thinking about growth and competitiveness, climate change and the environment, science, research, and innovation, resiliency and public trust, and market development, and trade. And I believe this presentation will be made available following uh, the, uh, the Canola Week, so you will be able to see this in greater detail. But I just wanted to put it out there to kind of showcase some key areas of focus that the next policy framework will uh, uh, address and see as, as a key pillar and foundational elements of where we're going. Uh, just to give you a bit of a, a timeline, uh, we anticipate uh, getting into um, uh, the multilateral agreement, uh, negotiations with, with uh, provincial colleagues, and the intent is to sign that uh, by July of next year and then go into bilateral agreements with provinces and then launch, as I said, April 1st, 2023. In the context of current programs, I, I did want to just mention a, a couple of them, specifically in the areas of environment and climate change, and I think would be appropriate in the context of uh, some of the discussions you're having this week uh, during Canola Week. We have launched recently some new programming that is outside uh, the next policy framework. Some of you may be aware of agricultural climate solutions. Uh, we have two different streams, the Living Labs, where it's a uh, commitment to co-develop on-farm with uh, producers as well as uh, other groups um, about, uh, with regards to the application of benef beneficial management practices uh, that are showing uh, high envir environmental benefits at the on-farm kind of lens. Um, and then there is also, uh, we launched uh, just uh, a few months ago, 
the uh, Agricultural Climate Solutions on-farm client uh, climate action fund, where again, uh, trying to support three key areas of focus in the context of uh, beneficial management practices, thinking about nitro nitrogen management, thinking about cover cropping, and thinking about rotational grazing practices. So we are in the process of finalizing uh, that program to kind of move it forward and, and get that delivered in the next few months. And finally, I just wanted to tackle uh, clean technology. We did launch a program earlier this summer uh, called Agricultural Climate uh, a Clean Tech uh, Program, ACT. Um, very healthy uh, pipeline of proposals that have come in, both for the adoption stream, again, that is uh, on-farm and processing uh, manufacturing lens, as well as research and innovation stream. We did have some carve-outs in budget 2021 with regards to uh, a 50 million uh, going towards grain dryers and uh, fuel switching as well. So that is something that we're building into our ACT, ACT program. Again, trying to build a bit of a perspective on, on climate change programming. Not want to go into great detail on the Canadian Agricultural Partnership, you know that this is a five-year frame um, that is ending uh, in about 18 months, uh, but I did want to focus more on the next policy frame. So within, within the CAP, as well as hopefully the next policy framework, these are some programs that some of you may be familiar with. I thought I would share, uh, more importantly, in the context of canola, the agri-science, which is basically in the middle of, um, middle of the screen, AgriScience is a program that uh, has two streams, a cluster stream and a project stream. We do have a canola cluster. Uh, we think it's doing some great work uh, led by, by, uh, by the industry. Um, we are looking at areas to further enhance the AgriScience program and the clusters for the next policy framework uh, in the context uh, of, of uh, starting on April 1st. 2023. Um, there are really, I would describe them as key priorities and principles that we need to kind of think about. And I, I wanted to maybe stress this in the presentation from an agri-science perspective and a cluster perspective. One, we need to continue to show that the research and innovation we're doing in these clusters is of strategic value to Canada. That is really important. Um, that it takes a supply chain lens, so it's a value chain uh, perspective from from uh, you know producer on farm all the way to consumer that lens of research and innovation helping achieve priorities and objectives across the supply chain I think is really important. We need to we need to continue to show results of our research and that is you know what's the outcome of the innovation and the science that we're working on that is a key priority and a key principle for us. Um, and finally, I would want to say from, an, uh, from, a, from a principled perspective on what we're, where we're seeing the, the next policy framework go, uh, knowledge uh, and tech transfer across uh, the system and, and showcasing how the research is actually being adopted on farm or across the supply chain is of, is of importance to us and will be a key priority and a key principle when we're, when we're reviewing uh, future clusters, including the canola cluster. Within agri-science, I will say there will, there will be three large priorities that will probably drive uh, decision-making. The first, not surprisingly, is in the area of environmental sustainability and climate change. That will be really important to us. So what is the work from a research and innovation lens that you're doing in this area? The second uh, theme, I guess, that, that would be important from a, from a funding perspective is on economic growth. So how is the research and innovation moving the economic prosperity of the sector, in this case, uh, the canola sector moving forward? So that is, is a key pillar of a key theme. And finally, I, I would describe the last theme being uh, sector resilience. And we're thinking about areas in, uh, such as plant health or uh, artificial intelligence and data and how data is supporting increased productivity and resiliency of, of the sector. So I would say environment, economic, and sector resiliency as being key three, three key themes under the agri-science uh, pillar that I wanted to share with you as being important uh, from a, a canola cluster uh, perspective as we move into the next round of agri-science funding. 
Um, uh, the last couple of slides, again, on business risk management and some cost sharing, programming in CAP, uh, not surprising. These are uh, agri-risk, agri-invest, agri-stability, uh, certainly areas that we're looking at. And of course, we have our significant funding in, in, uh, in uh, cost-shared programming with our provincial uh, and territorial governments. So uh, just gives you a bit of a flavor of where we are in the context of our BRM and pro, uh, BRM programming in, in the context of CAP. And finally, maybe I would just leave you with this, uh, an opportunity to think about as you have conversations uh, during Canola Week and afterwards and interactions with, uh, with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, think about you know, top priorities for your sector in the context of the next policy framework. I highlighted in that, in that one slide where the vision that was discussed last week in Guelph with, uh, with FPT ministers. Um, but what needs to be maybe prioritized in that context, in the context of, you know, what are some of the emerging pressures, uh, challenges, opportunities? I think the environment and sustainability goals will be key. So how does uh, the canola sector play in that area? Uh, what's been working well? Where, where can we find improvements? I think that's the feedback we are seeking from, from all of you. And uh, I'm hoping that the presentation I gave provided a bit of perspective on that. And just mention again, um, more than happy to have further conversations on uh, items related to the next policy framework, uh, items related to agri-science and links to the canola cluster, the opportunities for research and innovation in the, uh, in the canola uh, or the, the priorities of research innovation for canola. That's, that's really an area we would be very, very happy to, to follow up on. And with that, um, I will stop there. And uh, I do hope you have a productive week of discussions. And uh, please feel free to reach, uh, reach out. And uh, I would be more than happy to follow up on any of the topics I discussed today during the presentation. Thank you. And uh, I, I, I appreciate um, the opportunity again. And thank you to the organizers of Canola Week for letting me provide a bit of a perspective on, on what we do at Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. Thank you very much.